guys, welcome back to my channel. We are talking about sugar sensitivities. This is video three and uh, welcome back. So glad to have you. We are talking about uh, the body chemistry and the brain chemistry of a sugar sensitive person. My entire life I've been comparing myself probably to other people who are not sugar sensitive. There are just some things that I didn't understand and what I'm learning now is that like I'm not like other people and I can't compare myself to those other people and I just need to like be on my own sketch and figure things out on my own. What's interesting about the body chemistry and the brain chemistry of a sugar sensitive person is that usually people who are born into alcoholic families are also sugar sensitive. We went over that in the past video, but they're also born with lower serotonin levels, lower beta endorphin levels, and lower, um, their blood sugar does not operate the same as normal people's blood sugar. So beta endorphin isn't something that people talk about all the time. And I am, I basically did get this information from Potatoes Not Prozac because this this helped me understand, even though I knew I had depression, I knew I had anxiety, I knew I had like probably had low serotonin, low dopamine, low, uh, you know, like when I went off sugar and then I reincorporated it into my diet, I could feel my spikes going up and down. But what the book really helped me do is like put science behind what I was experiencing myself and also put a voice or put words to what I was already going through. Because when you observe your own body chemistry, you, all you have is your own data to go by. You don't know why it's happening. You And sometimes like a word like being sugar sensitive to me helps identify what it is and why it, it is that I'm going through what I'm going through. Beta endorphin is response, I mean I'm going to read because I'm sort of like quoting science here in the book. So um, beta endorphin is known for, this is directly quoted from the book, beta endorphin has a direct impact on a person's self-esteem, tolerance for, for pain, including emotional pain, sense of connectedness to others, and ability to take personal responsibility for action. So have you ever heard, there's this book called Constant Craving, it's by Doreen, Doreen Virtue, she's like known as the angel lady, but she used to be like a um, psychiatrist or psychologist before she started talking to <laughs> the angel realms. And she actually did a book based, it's called Constant Craving, and this was before she like became the angel lady. And basically it's how we self-medicate. So I was on the path to finding potatoes, not Prozac, but it's how we self-medicate with the types of food that we crave. And so I'm bringing that book in here because it says chocolate releases beta endorphin and endorphin causes an increase in feelings of self-esteem. So if you're a chocolate lover, if you crave chocolate, you're probably in need of beta endorphin. So beta endorphin also affects your cravings for sugar, your capacity to handle painful situations, your feelings of hope or despair about the future. So hope and despair about the future, this actually is really, uh, have you ever freaked out about your future or been, like I have, like because this is something that I've gone through and I've been going through, like I've worried about my future. I have, uh, I have like a security, I'm on a path, and yet at the same time I'm like very anxious and worried and also felt really grim about my future at times. So for no apparent reason. So these are other um, other things. But anyways, so I, I think we're, we're good on that, right? We're good on beta endorphin explanation right at this point. So people who are born sugar sensitive, this is like a born thing, a born thing. Uh, I don't know where that came from. But are usually born with low beta endorphin levels. That means that they're, uh, I don't know if, so how the brain works is like if you have a low uh, beta endorphin level, then you probably have more receptors because your brain produces less beta endorphin, meaning the receptors for it need to increase so it can capture as much as possible when it does come through. So increased receptors for beta endorphin, okay? Because you have increased receptors for beta endorphin, it means if you incorporate anything that produces beta endorphin, that means chocolate or sugar 
or alcohol, that means you have a overreaction. You have a reaction that normal people wouldn't have because you have increased amount of receptors, okay? That's me, me, I'm, I'm, say, I'm saying me, like you may too, I don't know. Isn't that interesting? So when you have that first drink or that first sip or when you have that piece of sugar, you feel like you're on a high, right? It feels really good. It feels better for you than it would for a normal person. That's what we're trying to say here. Okay, serotonin now. Also, people who are born sugar sensitive are born with lower serotonin. Serotonin is responsible for a peaceful, calm, relaxed feeling. Serotonin gives you the ability to say no. It gives you the ability to reject the chocolate or the sugar or the cookies if you're not hungry. It gives you that power. It gives you the power to control your impulses, okay? That's what serotonin does. It does, it's not just the happy drug. It's not just like the uh, euphoric. It controls other things, okay? Low serotonin levels look like addiction and depression and they're inherited just like low beta endorphins. Interesting, right? So calmness, a calmness, a sense of hope, self-esteem, ability to say no. These are all things that affect addiction. Blood sugar levels are volatile. They spike very high and then they dip very low. Spike high, dip low. A normal per so they look like this. Let's say if you incorporate sugar or alcohol or you know stuff to your to your body. A normal person would look like this. Basically, this puts stress. This puts stress on your adrenals, actually. So if you have like adrenal fatigue, also that may be a symptom of sugar sensitivity. So it also may be a symptom of something else. So go get that checked out. But like adrenal fatigue leads to signs of, it looks like depression and it also like makes your body hurt basically. But people who have like blood sugar volatility are, who are sugar sensitive, they're basically born hypoglycemic. So your body doesn't react to sugar like normal people do. And you see this when, um, when you go a really long time, like if you, if you get really hangry when you haven't eaten for a while, it may also be a sign that you might be sugar sensitive because your blood sugar drops so low when you starve yourself that it leads to like irritability and anger and all of the other stuff that goes with being hangry basically turned into a monster, which I, I definitely do, or I did. And then when you have your meal, your blood sugar drops, I mean, goes so high, it spikes like more than a normal person's would, and then it dips really low again because you like exhaust it. And so that leads to like stress and adrenal fatigue and basically constant ups and downs and it's not like good for your body. So anyways, I'd say those are the three most like different things about a person who is born sugar sensitive. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to give my tips and tricks and like dealing with those things. Also my personal experience about being on this program. And I'm not anywhere near done with the program, but I have seen a lot of really positive changes. So we'll get to that in a sec. But thank you so much for watching. Please, I would love to hear about your journey. Um, leave your comments, questions below. You can email me, tiffany at poshink.com. Uh, maybe we can start a community around this for support because most likely either your friends are also sugar sensitive and they don't approve of your new lifestyle or wanting to change or you just don't know anybody who is going through the things that you are going through. I know I don't. I, I really know that I don't. Anyways, let's get to it. Stay tuned for more. Uh, we're just getting warmed up. Thank you so much and we'll see you guys soon.